Okay, this is the second pulleys scenario. As you can see here, we have a pulley that's perched on the edge of a table so that one weight is hanging down, being pulled downwards due to gravity. The other weight is sitting on the table. In this particular case, we'll consider if the table is rough. <coughs> so there'll be some, some friction here. But this is not being pulled down due to gravity. The only force that's providing any movement here is the force of this object being pulled downwards due to gravity. Okay, and this is, um, I'm going to use example 14 from the textbook page 174 to help us with help us get to grips with this one. So in this particular one, we've got two particles A and B of masses 0.4 kilograms and 0.8 kilograms. So let's get let's get these in. So if this is 0.4 kg, then the force downwards due to gravity is 0.4. G. And we can see that as this is sitting on the table and not moving downwards, I need to have a normal force. I put this here, so the normal force is not going to be part of our calculations. It would become part of our calculations later on when we consider friction in more detail. But for now, um, we're not really, we don't really need that, but we better put it on there anyway. Uh, so A and B of mass is 0 0.4 and 0 0.8, so this is 0 0.8 kilograms, so we need one of our force arrows coming down here like that, 0 0.8 G, G being 0 0.8 as ever. They're connected by a light, inextensible string, so we don't need to take the weight of the string into account. Um, and it doesn't stretch, so the tension presumably in the string at all points is going to be the same. Particle A lies on a rough horizontal table 4.5 meters from a smooth pulley, so this distance here is 4.5 meters. <clears throat> and this is a small smooth pulley, there's no friction here. The string passes over the pulley and B hangs freely with the string tight, 0.5 meters above horizontal ground. So down here we've got the ground. And this distance is 0.5 meters. Oops, 0.5 meters. The string passes over the pulley and B hangs freely, freely with the string tight, 0.5 meters above horizontal ground. A frictional force of magnitude 0.08 G opposes the motion of particle A. So we have a frictional force here going that way, which is 0.08 times acceleration due to gravity. Uh, and the system is released from rest. We need to find the acceleration of the system. Okay, so <clears throat> let's consider what forces are making this are making this move. Um, let's look at, um, at A, what's making this move. We have a tension here, so for A, we have a tension that way. Presumably this is moving this way, it's going to be accelerating to the right. So we've got tension that way, we have a force slowing it down, which is 0.08 G, and that's going to be the mass, 0.4 times acceleration, which is A. And now let's consider for B, well, we've got a tension in the string, which is obviously slowing it down a little bit. It's moving downwards. So let's consider 0.8 G is the positive, 0.8 G is the force pulling it downwards. Take away the tension, which is pulling it back up a little bit, or at least slowing it down, and that's going to equal 0.8 A. Okay, I have two equations, I have two unknowns. If I add these two together, Let's get it correct this time. Add these two together so I get 0.72 G. That plus that. That add that cancels. Add 
add these two together, 1.2a. So I can work out that a is 0.72g divided by 1.2, which is uh, 612 72 0.6 times g. You can press buttons on your calculator 0 0.6 times 9.8 if you wanted to give that um, a value. So, a the acceleration of this downwards and the acceleration of this that way because this is inextensible, the two will be accelerating at the same rate. The acceleration of both these two is 0 0.6 g. So the acceleration, if you like, of the whole system is 0.6g. Okay, so we now want the time taken for B to reach the ground. Well, let's see what information we have. Uh, this is part B. We know acceleration is 0.6g. We know that S is 0.5. We know the initial velocity, because it's from rest, is 0. And we want to work out T. So we need an equation that's going to connect all these. S equals ut plus a half ad squared springs to mind. S equals ut plus a half at squared. Put our numbers in. Uh, 0 0.5 is 0 times t plus a half times 0 0.6g times t squared. So we just need to rearrange this. Uh, a little bit so we've got 0 point that's naught obviously 0 0.5 take away no whoops 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.3 g and that's going to be t squared so t is therefore something like 0 0.4 seconds Last bit, the most complicated bit, is the total distance travelled by A before it comes to rest. Okay, this is the, the, the part that catches people out. Let's consider the motion of this thing. It's got 4.5 metres to run. For half of that, for 0.5 metres of that, I should say, it will be pulled along by this thing. Okay, for 0.4 seconds, it will be pulled on. It will accelerate. Once this hits the ground, it'll stop accelerating, it'll have reached a certain velocity, and then it'll start to slow down. And it'll slow down because you've got a force due to friction dragging it back. So there's two phases to this. The first phase is when it speeds up, accelerates to a point, then when B hits the ground, it stops pulling it, and so it'll slow down. And we want to work out the total distance traveled by A. Um, we will need to know the speed of this thing when it hits the ground because that will tell us the speed of this thing once it's gone half a metre, the same half metre as this. Okay, so uh, we now do need to work out V. Well, we've got, we know that T is 0 0.4. Uh, we could use any, any, of the, any of the SUVAT equations. I'm going to go with V equals U plus A T. So the final velocity is the initial velocity uh, plus 0.6g times by, uh, I actually need the, I need the actual value, I can't have the rounded value, this is a rounded value, I need the actual value. And by magic, the velocity that we get is 2.4, 2.4. Eight, seven meters per second so <clears throat> after half a meter this thing is traveling at 2.42487 meters per second <clears throat> we then only have one force acting on this in this direction because there's no longer a tension in the rope the only force we have is the 0 0.08 so we can now work out what the deceleration of this is because it's going to slow down so uh, force is mass times acceleration uh, the force we've got acting on it is 0 0.08 g the mass is 0 0.4 uh, times a 
case, so A is 0.08 G divided by 0.4, so the acceleration or the deceleration of the object. If you, if you like, you can call that a negative value as it is up here because it's in the opposite direction to motion. So if that's a minus, so we'll get a minus value for acceleration. A negative acceleration means a deceleration. Um, so that is minus 0.2 g. So that's its deceleration. We now want to work out the total distance. So I know what a is. I know what initial velocity is because my initial velocity for the second part of this is the final velocity we had for here. 2.42487. So if I'm splitting the motion up into two bits. This is not to scale, by the way, clearly. So the first half a meter, when it's being pulled along, after half a meter, its velocity is 2.42487. At this point, there's no longer a tension here. It starts to slow down. It slows down at a rate of 0.2 g. <clears throat> so A is that. Initial velocity is this. I want to work out S, so S is what I want to work out, write down everything I have, everything I need. Um, and I want to see uh, what happens before it comes to rest. So rest means that the final velocity is naught. So I want something that connects A, U, S and V. Well, I'm thinking V squared equals U squared plus 2A, S. All right, let's put these in. So uh, V is naught, U is 2.42487 squared plus 2 times minus 0.2G times S. Uh, rearranging all this, S is <coughs> minus 2.42487 squared divided by minus 0.4 g. Plugging that into my calculator will give me a distance of 1.5 meters. Now careful here because that's uh, the second part of the journey. So it's already gone half a meter. The second half of the journey takes one and a half meters. So the total distance is two meters. Now clearly your questions are not going to be the same as this but what you are doing in terms of your drawings, your diagrams, the tension is going to be the same in both. The tension here goes up, the tension in here is pulling that that way. The only force making this move is the force of this one due to gravity so make sure all your arrows are in um, and that makes the whole the whole calculating that much easier.